Fears to Fathom is an episodic anthology of short horror stories, with only the first two of five episodes released so far, Home Alone and Norwood Hitchhike. I wouldn't say this is a game where you gain much by going in totally blind, but do be wary of spoilers ahead. If at any point you're interested in playing for yourself, I would recommend doing just that. Episode 1 is very limited in its presentation and scope, but I find it effective regardless. The premise is that you're an ordinary kid with a jank sleep schedule, home alone for the weekend while your parents are out. We wake up at dusk and are made to complete some banal tasks until our character is ready to go back to bed. Waking up again shortly thereafter, we need to head downstairs to get some water. While walking back to the bedroom, our mom sends us a disturbing picture from our neighbor of a man standing in front of the house. She tells us to hide while she calls the police. While hiding, we hear a window get smashed while somebody incessantly rings the doorbell. I'll skip over some stuff here, but essentially, the police will show up and you'll be rescued. It's left ambiguous as to whether or not the home invaders were caught, or if they just escaped. That was a very brief plot synopsis for a very brief episode. All in all, the first episode should take no longer than 20 minutes to complete on your first go. Like I said a paragraph ago, however, it's effective and mostly uses its time well. Fear of the Dark is very primal, and this game exploits that to great effect. The house is lit up just well enough to see where you're going, but also dim enough to trick you. You might start to see things that aren't actually there. No, wait, that was definitely real. Anyway, there's a huge sense of dread and foreboding throughout the episode. Admittedly, some of that might be player-dependent. I felt tense because I knew scares were coming, but you might be braver. Regardless of my wimpishness when it comes to horror games, the atmosphere is appropriately creepy. Adding to all this is the sound design and music. The sound design is muted for the most part. No, not silent, just grounded. What you'll mostly be hearing is a droning soundscape, which is pretty good at building tension in critical moments. I could do without all the mouth sounds though. If you're somebody, like me, that hates close-up mouth sounds, then this might prove to be worse than any potential jump scare. Speaking of jump scares, this has them. I know that jump scares are thought of as lazy, and I agree with that for the most part. I'm willing to give fears to fathom the benefit of the doubt here though, since I feel it's greater than the sum of its parts. If jump scares were the game's only method of unnerving the player, then this video wouldn't be titled Recommending Fears to Fathom. There's palpable dread and terror throughout that precedes any jump scare, so I don't mind it using a jump scare as a climax. Should you do everything right, you won't even have to endure any jump scares, but you would also have to think pretty far outside the box. What you have to do in order to proceed properly is completely counterintuitive. After you get sent the picture of the would-be home invader, you'll probably hide under the bed. After waiting a while, with nothing really happening, you'll likely get bored and go back out into the house. It's here where we're confronted, kind of, by this guy that was hiding in the parents' room. What now? Maybe you can sneak around him? Nope. Circumvent him and hide under the bed indefinitely? That's not it either. It's at this point where I was thoroughly confused. The mother told me to go downstairs to answer the door, and I didn't see any reason why she would lie, but every time I tried it, I'd get death gripped by this goofy ass. Well, as it turns out, you're supposed to see him fling the door open, and then retreat and hide under the bed until the cops come. They'll only come after you've triggered this. I'd like to shake the hand of whoever got that on their first try with no walkthroughs, because that person must have a really unique mind. This fumble aside, episode 1 is short and sweet. And free. And scary. If I had another major complaint though, it'd be the lack of checkpoints. I understand the game is very short as is, but it's annoying that the game resorts to closing itself any time you get jumped, making you replay the entire thing every time. On to episode 2 now, which just so happens to be better in every single way. The second episode places you in the shoes of Holly, who is driving back home after a gaming convention. She's taking a detour and has to stop to fuel up her car. In the gas station, the clerk warns her about some people going missing up the road and a killer ghost lady. Normal small town stuff. While exiting the gas station, we can spot a couple of people walking away from Holly's car suspiciously. I guess she thinks nothing of it, though. We set back out on our trip and Holly's car eventually breaks down on the side of the road. We are stranded. Eventually, a man stops and allows us to catch a ride to the nearest motel. After arriving, we book a room and get ambushed by Tommy here, who tells us he'll get to working on our car. After settling in, Holly gets creeped on and decides to grab a coffee. Surprise, surprise, her coffee was dosed. She says she was sedated. Fucking crazy sedation. Back in our motel room, the manager bangs on Holly's door and tells her to keep the noise down. Holly tells him about the coffee machine and offers to show him what she's talking about. When they get where the coffee machine was, Holly finds it missing. The manager very suddenly becomes irate and yells at us to go back to our room. A few minutes pass and we're bothered by someone banging on the door again. We ask what they want and they say they need help. If you have any sense, you'll tell them to piss off. 
They become enraged and start trying to bust the door down. We hide in the closet while they look around for us, and then the manager comes to the rescue. We're saved. Holly speculates that it might have been a cult thing, and the episode ends. This episode is fucking great. Before I praise it though, I want to discuss a few annoyances I have. First, the game has a stamina system for no discernible reason. After you're dropped off at the motel, you have to carry all of Holly's things from the lobby to her room. You can sprint between the lobby and your room, but Holly gets winded super quickly. To alleviate this, you have to buy and consume snacks from these vending machines. Why? It doesn't build tension that I can't run here, and actually purchasing these items takes forever. What makes it worse is that being dropped off at the motel is your last checkpoint, so if you die later, you have to repeat this entire process. At best, this is an oversight by the developer. At worst, it's a horrible attempt to pad the game's length. Another thing is how randomly placed the coffee machine is. It makes sense in canon that it'd be here, and it definitely highlights that it shouldn't be here, but it's confusing for a moment that it's so out of the way. Anyway, the atmosphere in this episode is phenomenal. Driving through the woods, I felt compelled to scan the tree lines for any potential threat. The game is so good in that sense, it almost makes you search for the scares. I thought I'd see something moving, but I could never be sure. Regardless, the best course of action is to continue driving. Also, keep your eyes on the road, or you could end up like this. I'm not sure if these models detract from or add to the horror. I guess when they're idle they look fine, but in motion it's kinda laughable. <laughs> anyway, the storytelling is much better in this episode as well. Makes sense, this episode is like three to four times longer than the first and has more content, though it's still pretty short. An ordinary playthrough should take about 45 minutes. The lore that's built up around the town and the motel from the NPCs is great. The tale about the ghost woman is particularly creepy, and I can almost swear you can just about catch a glimpse of her on the side of the road at some points. While stranded, I thought I was hearing things in the adjacent field, though I'd write it off as being Holly's footsteps. To test this, I'd stop walking and the sound would persist. It does a great job of making you feel helpless, which you mostly are. There's more foreshadowing as well, room 4 being suspicious as fuck, all the multiple cases of being stalked, old pigsy climbing in your closet after you wake up, the guys in the van at the gas station. Despite being in a very public place, I felt totally isolated, and that's great. A lot of the horror, as I've already said, relies on the game being visually dark. To aid this, the game also has a VHS filter, which you can't turn off in case you were wondering. I like it overall, but it can be bothersome. I don't know if this was done to hide low-quality assets or because analog technology equals scary, but in already dark conditions, the filter can blur my vision more than I feel is necessary. Again, though, overall I dig it. Fears to Fathom as it stands now is pretty good. I felt unnerved for most of my time playing and it made me remember why I don't usually play horror games, and I mean that in the absolute best way possible. If the rest of the episodes maintain this trajectory, I could see Fears to Fathom turning out great when it's all said and done. If you want a fun little bite-sized horror game to play, I highly recommend Fears to Fathom. It's not huge or profound or anything, but it's short, sweet, and does what it sets out to do very well.